On the Indo-Pak debate tonight on why Pakistan has to do this, if, it is, uh, if there is any sense of uh, purpose in what that uh, statement was of the NSA after the meeting in New York, why is Pakistani doing this regardless? With us this evening from New Delhi is Kamal Sibal, former Foreign Secretary. Joining us from Islamabad is Sayyid Tariq Pirzada, Strategic Affairs Analyst. With me in the studios here in New Delhi is uh, senior BJP leader Subramaniam Swami and joining Tariq Pirzada in the studios in Islamabad is Senator Professor Sajid Mir, who is the president of the Markazi Jamiat Ahle Hadith of Pakistan, which is a religio-political party closely aligned with the PMLN. It is part of the Islamic uh, Mutahida Majlis e Amal. And also joining us in the studios in, in Delhi is Maruf Raza, Times Now strategic affairs expert. Uh, someone greatly respected for his insight on Pakistan strategic affairs and from Karachi is member of the Central Coordination Committee of the MQM, the Mutahida Kwami Movement, Haider Abbas Rizvi. Ladies and uh, sorry, gentlemen, let's begin the debate. So why do you think this is being done, Maruf? Let's put this in perspective. Uh, the Prime Minister was having these talks in uh, New York and if you look at the dates in which the attempted incursion in Kiran was happening, it was almost around those dates. Well, I mean, to give Nawaz Sharif the benefit of doubt, I would say that, as in the case of Kargil, but yes. perhaps lesser so now, the military in Pakistan is certainly not keeping Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif completely in the loop. Nawaz Sharif is not entirely in control, so therefore New Delhi to expect him to deliver on all counts on India-Pakistan relationship, I've always argued, is expecting too much too soon from him. Having said that, the weather conditions being what they are in the LOC area and the winter setting in any time, it's, it's, it is exactly at this point of time that infiltrations of this nature would be attempted en masse to ensure that a maximum number of people can be pushed in before the snows set in. Yes. And finally, those hardliners in Pakistan's establishment who want to embarrass Nawaz Sharif, who don't want India-Pakistan process to go forward, and there is certain what, what, merit in the Indian argument that India-Pakistan relationship should move cautiously forward, not be too excited about what are the deliverables post-New York. Those elements are certainly supporting them within the military establishment and on the ground. So you have no doubt the that there's a Pakistani army imprint is on this incident in India? Uh, certainly. I mean, to no say that Pakistan's that. army had no role in it is to say that Pakistan army doesn't have a presence on the LOC from where they have infiltrated. And well, there okay. is a large chunk of land which is under the army's observation and control. So yes. how can any group of 30, 40 so, militants go across? Now some Pakistani friends of ours may argue yeah. that these are the guys who have lost their way from the valley into the Karen sector you believe and that? suddenly, I mean that is completely absurd but it is, had been argued in the past so I am cautioning you well, that this I, argument will be thrown Well, Let's up. see if the argument comes forward. My first question is the Senator Professor Sajid Me, Sir, you are closely associated with the PMLN and therefore you are part of the ruling establishment in Pakistan. Why would Nawaz Sharif allow something like this to do? And most people in India believe that whatever the Pakistani army is trying to do is with the permission of Nawaz Sharif. Senator, why is this happening? Uh, I think people in Pakistan have the same feelings as uh, you are expressing. We also feel that uh, when Nawaz Sharif tried to uh, negotiate with India, and uh, put a step forward towards it. At, this, at the same time, Pakistani soldiers were attacked on the uh, line of control. Some were killed, some were wounded. And we have the same feeling that the establishment or the army in India doesn't want peace uh, with Pakistan. So uh, I think the time is that instead of creating these doubts or in, instead, instead of uh, propagating uh, the, these things at, at this uh, juncture of time, instead of that, we should talk about peace and we should instead of expressing our doubts instead of expressing our uh, so we, uh, our impressions of the past peace, but who, let let, who, let let us move forward to to, to the future want peace, but, uh, but just a minute just just, see, just, a minute, just a minute Prime Minister just a minute just a minute York, if you have if you want just to improve minute, the relationship let, 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 you let, must start by improving the situation let, around let the me, let me finish please let me finish let me talk i have come here to talk not just just to listen i want to say that if you have the feeling that the establishment or the army in Pakistan doesn't want peace with India, we have the same feeling and we have proofs for that. And you are always talk of infiltration uh, one-sidedly. We, we, we also talk here of infiltration from India in, uh, in Fata, in Balochistan, in Karachi, everywhere. 
so it, 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 let us Sir, together let us together i am, leave I am these, talking leave. about the loc i am talking please, about the loc please, please do not, and this attack takes place please 450 meters disturb, india please inside indian territory please, it's please, a it's please, a classic military ambush have, it could not have been wor the work of terrorists on irregular. If you want to have me on board, and, don't disturb me, please. And 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 and, 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 okay, and okay, okay, pro professor, okay, go on, go on. professor Sajid Mir, pro professor, professor, you know, yes, this is regular Pakistani talk. Yep. They always let, deny let it, me, and later, let, you know, they write let books me about how the Pakistani let army me was finish what I want attack. to say. Let me finish. What I want let me finish. Then, then you can talk. Listen, one thing is very clear. At this juncture of time, if we want to move forward towards peace, we should not talk about the past. We should not talk e e even about the recent past. If, if we start talking, oh, no. talking, it will be on both sides. It will not be one one sided. Oh, no. so we I, I we have we have we have been facing infil well, infil I, I think inf inf infiltration uh, from India for, for years uh, now. Uh, for senator, years. senator, so, you, senator, you know the past so, is a, the looking at the so, past. Looking at the past the, is the very only difference and very useful for, for, for everyone, especially all very, of us very here in use, India. Very useful, because I would it, like to just quickly if, if remind you, you before look. I go back, Subramaniam Swami and Maruf Raza both want to respond to you. If Professor, you, one minute. If you, lo if you want to look at the past, let, let me also look page, at your past. Sir, one minute. Sir, sir, one minute. Sir, one minute. You are saying that what has happened in Keran is not done by the Pakistani army. How do I believe that? I, and this is the reason why I don't believe that. Because a hundred page white paper published by the PMLN which you are associated with. In 2006, it was titled Kargil Adventurism, who is responsible for another defeat? And this is what it said. The Kargil misadventure was Musharraf's own brainchild and Nawaz Sharif was never taken into confidence as was claimed by Parvez Musharraf. This is the white paper of the PMLN, sir, with which you are associated with. In other words, you yourself if agree you, that the Pakistani army has been pushing its people and special forces into India while continuing to deny to do so. So why should we trust what you are saying in Keran? Subramaniam Swami and Maruf are both responding. Subramaniam Swami, please, who is the leader of the BJP, is responding to you. See, first of all... Uh let me say there is no such thing as a Pakistani government. There are three or four Pakistani governments there. They function independently. The worst part is the civilian government is more or less uh, subservient to the other three. The ISI, the military and the uh, hardline uh, clerics. So we have to first understand it's no use saying Musharraf, uh, why would uh, Musharraf do this or Nawaz Sharif do this. Today the issue is that the Pakistani civilian government cannot be held responsible. Now, can you imagine the well, do, you feel, do you feel they should or should not be held responsible? No, they can't be because they don't, uh, they can't they're not count for anything. But the, the Pakistani people army... Who have, uh, people who have to be held responsible is the Pakistani army, the ISI and the uh, hardline uh, uh, clerics. These are the people, we have to understand their psyche. There is no room presently for a uh, peaceful exchange of uh, of ideas with the Pakistan because these three people are under the impression that this is a weak government and I think recent events have further con um, uh, confirmed it and the fact that the Prime Minister of Pakistan can say to an Indian journalist that uh, he, uh, the, uh, and compare the Indian Prime Minister to a Deati Aurat well, that's another running. issue. That's another well, that's issue. that's an issue because it shows the contempt they have for the government of India. Well, so you a, cannot have any negotiations with Pakistan uh, till a stronger government comes to before, uh, power and deals with Pakistan on the, on the basis that be, they understand be, before what I, force Before means. I go across for a response from Sayyid Tariq Pirzada in Islamabad, Maruf wants to make a quick counter comment. Yes. Maruf, yes. Oh, well, just, just two quick points. One is that we often make the mistake in India to perceive that Pakistan functions the way India does. So we look at Pakistan from an Indian prism. And in Pakistan, as Professor Javed Mir has just brought out, they perceive that the Indian army here is as powerful as the Pakistan army is in decision making. The Indian army, sir doesn't operate outside a political brief and this government if it wanted to create trouble on the LOC it wouldn't go out of its way against public opinion to go and have talks with Pakistan that's the first point point. and the second point you keep bringing up about Baluchistan even the National Security Advisor of India and several governments in uh, several governmental meetings in India have said give us evidence there is no evidence even Akbar Ahmed in his recent book on the thistle and the drone and he's an eminent Pakistani scholar has had a whole chapter on Baluchistan and there's not a word of mention there and this is a recent publication which has just come out okay. not a word is mentioned about India's role in Baluchistan so please go back and do a little homework and give us evidence and where was Baluchistan's problem before 9-11 okay, when 
Maru, Pakistan claims that India Maru, got involved. I, I, Last I, I, 50 years, what have you done with Baluchistan? I, I, Why blame us? As I go across for a response, I think uh, both Haider Abbas, Rizvi and uh, uh, Syed Tariq Pizad still need to come into the debate. But to both of you gentlemen, I'd like to add a little bit of substance into why India is totally convinced about the Pakistani army hand. There are four reasons. One, this happened during the changeover of a, of a battalion. In other words, it was timed exactly after the 20 Kumau regiment had handed over charge to the 3 by 3 Gorkha rivals. That's fingerprint number one. Second, a group of 20 men led the ambush. This proves that these were Pakistani army soldiers. The third is reconnaissance missions and radio intercepts have shown that attempts were made to set up supply and logistic line to the infiltrators from across the LOC in totally the same way fashion as it is done for regular troops. So, what is proven? QED, Sayyid Tariq Pirzada is, you try to hide the fact of your Pakistani soldiers' involvement. You've been thoroughly exposed. You have been thoroughly exposed. This was a Pakistani army operation. Well, you know, uh, Arnav, your problem is that you talk more than you listen. So let's start with point one. Number one, the Indian army has been totally exposed as a result of the recent disclosure that your ex-chief of army staff, V.K. Singh, was launching operations outside the spectrum of law, Indian is this uh, the law. Only, is this the only way you have to dodge the real issue? No, no, no. You have no other excuse to dodge the real issue, Sayyid Tariq Let me, just, let me say one I'm thing. I'm short of excuses well, tonight not, not to address the real subject. All right. Start number discerning. two. Point number two. Point number two. India is the biggest violator of Simla agreement. Because if you read the last paragraph, and I'm not giving you a Sir, lecture. Sir, you don't want to talk about what read the last that your no, soldiers no, 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 did no. Hold on. Hold on. Since you are going into the past, let me give you a little lecture on that. Let me honestly say. It says the last paragraph is the largest component of similar agreement. It says that the two heads of states shall meet at a convenient time. And in the meantime, the representatives of the two governments shall Sir, this is uh, 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 meet to arrange modalities and technicalities to resolve the issue of Jammu and Kashmir. Sir, you it's want been to go into history years. I can count you, you with history, but I don't want that. to do that. I so want what to are you talking present. about cross-border oh, incursions? I want to live in the present. Well, You're going you back into history. If you, want, if you want to go back well, into history, let me tell you. Well, you just told us a minute ago. Let me tell you, sir. If you have to go back into history, let me tell you equally. Didn't you say, let me talk about what Swami said, Subramanian Swami said. You know, BJP has a very dark history. Uh, and and uh, and Mr. Swami has nothing much to ta uh, brag about. Take a look at at the history. I'm not going to give you the example. It is the the darkest thing that the Indian political culture has is the Rashtriya Sevak Sangh and BJP. They need to be ashamed. And Babri Mosque is still a, a, a living symbol. The demolition of that is a living symbol so how many, of what they so actually how many do. How many avoid Number the real three. issue? Let, let's so let's just march because, on. So if just you because want to talk about Bishad, I'd like to draw you back to the debate. We are talking about an incident of betrayal that happened while your Prime Minister was talking to our Prime Minister in New York. And you know what? There, there is, is no betrayal. Is there is no betrayal. Also, you guys bombed Pakistani side. Scene, yeah, Dr. You have more guns. You have a larger army. I don't control my Saying Pakistan army. bombs you more than you do. You are not, no, sir, Mr. Pirzada. You are not addressing the issue. We are talking about the issue the, is Pakistan's that you are not talking about the real issue, which is the issue of Jammu and Kashmir and its resolution under Simla agreement. Oh, always talk is. about sir, that. You want to we are not here Jammu to and talk about can anything. Have another debate on it. Sir, you don't want no, 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 no. You, what you you're talk talking about, about when you say that there was an incident from Pakistan, up, I go as right my now, colleague said a minute ago, I, you guys you uh, launch incursions into Pakistan every other day. To you. Well, After that, every other day. You have you brought up this uh, masjid demolition question because in Pakistan, when Musharraf was there, he demolished about six masjids in a row to build a road. Saudi Arabia is demolishing masjids all the time. So what is it that you are so concerned in your own country, you are demolishing masjids? Why should you object? No, let's, we... not, let's not get into No, I, get why into should he bring areas? it up? Think, Somebody in India can bring it up. I do not think but they cannot has, bring it up. Pakistanis like cannot bring it up. Like the, the ones we are and how many have uh, 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 been in demolished? This is not the... No, no, one second. This is... No peace talks at all. Senator, Senator, may I draw the debate back to the subject? Because I want to say one thing to you. 
I don't think any Indian is proud about the uh, destruction of the Babri Masjid. Nobody is proud. Why, 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 of the Pakistani no, army all no over the Kerala Pakistani army. Why would your Pakistani army do something army like this? Has its own work cut out. They are fighting on two fronts, and they don't have time for sending few buck, bunch of people across. Exactly. Then uh, don't the open Indian up side. another front, or you'll get a battering. Uh, Haider Abbas Rizvi, why they, would the Pakistani army be adventurous now? They have 700,000 troops in Indian, uh, in the Indian uh, held Kashmir. They don't have to send a couple of people. If there would be so any your problem, figures, they, your they, figures they, about Indian a, troops keep all, varying depending on how it suits your argument. If we had 700,000 troops in Kashmir, the Indian army is 1.1 million strong. Are you trying to say that the rest of the one-fourth well, of the Indian yes, army is deployed against China and fighting insurgency forces, in peacetime locations? One second, one second. You got your back, figures wrong, sir. Do your homework. That question was to Haider Abbas Rizvi, sir. Why do you think there is a so much adventurism from the Pakistani army? These are other elements also.